So this is sort of a special edition because I've already done two videos this week. However, I read an article today that made me think that there was a really good opportunity to talk about what technology is out there, what databases you know, are really capable of. And I want to make sure that I 100% preface this. This is, there are no political statements here. I'm really just talking about the technology and there are some questions that I have. And having some background where I have worked with government organizations and uh, government systems before, again, nothing classified or anything silly like that, I do have some perceptions of how these things usually run. Again, I cannot claim any special knowledge, um, but I do know from my past experiences what we can speculate on. So this is really um, just really a commentary on technical aspects of this article, and I thought it was a really interesting deep dive that we could take. I just wanna take this one a little bit more seriously because it is focused on COVID-19, and since I do think that's a very serious topic, I don't really wanna make light of it. So with that, let's go and check out the article that I saw. Okay, so before we get started, um, this article is mostly talking about actual networking systems, the ones that are kind of connecting all of these different um, dispersed systems of, of hospitals together. Um, although they keep talking about the database and latency and, and timing issues. So we'll piece apart a lot of those as far as um, data considerations are concerned. I just wanted to preface all of this by saying that is um, the centralization of, of data so that all data is in one place and the timing of getting all of that data. So timeliness. When you put all the data in one place to analyze, that, that's fine. But when you're talking about centralize everything on the database side, there are a lot of complications with that. Um, usually you just want to be able to create almost a linked data structure. Um, again, Knowledge Graph really helps in, in that respect. Um, it doesn't seem like that's what they are doing here. I think that a lot of this is hardwired together where each system has to talk to each system and then the data is completely copied over, completely copied over. Um, when you do that, when, when um, uh, systems are, are linked in that way, uh, you essentially are taking the schema from both systems, which means they did not have time to take all the data from the CDC and put it into the HHS um, system. So what they probably did was create um, a translation layer between those two different schema. And those schema are basically what contains all the data on these patients. And uh, so when you do that, uh, you basically hinder yourself in the long run because one system cannot be updated without the other system already being updated. And it seems like these systems are all very complex. So I am hoping that they did a very good translation service uh, between the two, because if not, there could be some complications. Uh, but we'll get into more on the article uh, in a second. I just wanted to make a note that the systems that they're talking about here is uh, the CDC has a, a health network that they mentioned in the article and the one that the HHS is looking at is called this um, teletracking, both of which are really more focused on the data entry and um, the essentially sucking up of the data. It doesn't talk about the ETL. It doesn't talk extract, transform, and load. So extracting the data from these systems, transforming it into something the database can do, and then loading it into that database. It doesn't talk about those at all. In the article, it also, uh, there are some people that are expressing that there are data management tools that are much more sophisticated than the ones um, both of these entities are, are using, the CDC and the HHS. I would tend to agree, um, although I am obviously very uh, out, out of uh, data to be able to uh, comment further on that. Um, but I do know uh, just from listening to the characteristics in this article's uh, descriptions that there are more likely things that uh, they could be doing uh, a little bit better. The biggest one 
is actually uh, here where it is talking about push data. So essentially what that means is the data has to be pushed into the system and then the system does things with it. Um, that's not a problem. Push and pull different systems. They, there's a fit for purpose for both. But really what I'm seeing here is um, the, the part that, that gives me pause is uh, people actually have to put in the information. So manually enter data is the thing that gives me the most concern out of this entire article. Because as soon as you have humans typing in data, what if you, what's called fat finger it, you, you accidentally press a different button, or if you spell something differently, or you click the wrong thing, human error is probably the, the biggest issue in systems like this, where there's manual entry. There are automated ways to gather that information that could probably be paired up with the systems that they're talking about in this article. It doesn't mean that it would even have to replace the, the systems they're talking about here. Okay, so let's, let's travel down. Um, basically, this is saying that the CDC uh, currently has been uh, the main uh, hub of all of the uh, coronavirus um, data that's been, that's been coming in. But there seems to be a change that's coming from the Health and Human Services where they will be taking over those databases. So databases are very much in the realm of information architecture. Um, there are a lot of misconceptions on what a database means. Um, essentially, it is just a bunch of tables if you're doing tabular data, um, or you can do this in even a graph database. Um, and it's, it's essentially just a bunch of name value pairs, which is, you know, the metadata connected to, you know, the values in a repository that you can then query. So this is talking about why it's actually happening, why the decision was made. And that's the part that really got me thinking about the technology part of this, which is, uh, this health and human services spokesman, uh, Michael Caputo, uh, is calling the CDC symptom, uh, system inadequate and said the two systems, what those two systems will be able to be linked. Now, one thing, we're just gonna stop here for a second. So anytime you link systems, it adds seconds of delay. So you might think seconds isn't that long, but for instance, when uh, you are working on Wall Street, the closer your uh, office to the actual you know, location of all the trading, the better off you are. And the reason for that is you are that much closer to having your trades go in, whereas your competitors who are farther out, farther away, um, don't have that luxury. So location, even though it's all digital, does actually matter when things are still going over the wire, so to speak. So wire meaning wireless or in a digital, you know, kind of um, physical wire. So when I see something that talks about two systems are linked, what that means to me is there will be a delay. I'm saying this is a consideration where Databases that are connected together, there is always a delay once that happens. It is good that they are being linked. And I am really hoping that somebody with a good data governance background is looking at those uh, linking protocols because there are some that have been used um, in the past that have security issues, especially when it's talking about things that are um, health related, you know, HIPAA and other things. There's usually very good protocols for um, medical uh, types of data exchange. However, those things can also be hacked. So again, it's a consideration that I would think about here. It's also saying the CDC would continue to make data public. So I'm gonna stop there for a second also and say that I know this article does uh, go into whether the, the data is still going to be public and whether people can still access it and, and run queries. You've all probably seen a lot of other research and articles talking about how people are so hungry for, for answers that they're 
practicing some bad science, there's also some very, very good science out there. So um, just be aware when you are looking at any data that's regarding COVID. The other thing I just wanted to mention is um, continue to make the data public is also important to note because um, some of the things that have met, are mentioned in this article are talking about how if the data is uh, locked away or if it's not made available, um, it would actually it would extend the amount of time uh, that it's going to take to find any value, um, you know, in in that data. And there is there is a lot of truth uh, to having open scientific data. In fact, um, there was an outreach of every publisher I can think of um, making all of their coronavirus um, research completely free um, when all of this broke out. And because of that, there there was a lot of researchers that um, banded together and um, they sequenced um, the uh, coronavirus so that we had um, a breakthrough in you know how it works and and some of those things. And um, without having some of that um, free, open research communication, um, that might not have happened. Suffice it to say, you know, the more data that researchers have, um, it, it's not to be taken lightly if the data um, would be taken out of the public cycle. I don't believe that that would happen, again, because a lot of other, you know, government data is made available. I just question when it would be available because if they will not release the data, um, you know, close to the timing that it is now, remember there later on in this, it talks about uh, real-time updates. Um, I think everybody could benefit from that. This is the part that, that really made me think that we should do this video. Today, the CDC still has at least a week lag in reporting data. So a week lag is a lot of time, especially when there is um, outbreaks and when you have to get um, the data as quickly as possible. Uh, Caputo, again, the HHS spokesperson, says here, America requires it in real time. The new, faster, and complete data system. I'm not quite sure what complete means. This is where I really wish that I did know, um, as a lot of us probably do, which databases they're talking about, what kind of technology. I know that usually um, with any other company, including the government, there are two avenues you can take. COTS, which is commercial off the shelf uh, tooling, and then there is homegrown systems. So I have been a part of building not this kind of databases, nothing to do with this article in other things, mostly dealing with manufacturing um, is what I was working on. I know that at least in that specific area, um, anytime I was working with um, the government, uh, things tended to take a longer time and that's not that surprising. Um, there is a lot more red tape. There are way more protocols, way more standards, way more signatures. There is a very strict hierarchy. I'm not judging if that's good or bad. I'm just saying it does add a lot of time to any projects. Um, so what this tells me is, again, speculation here. If this was a database and I was trying to figure out what it is, doing my sleuthing work here, I would say, okay, so unless um, the government has been building this supreme medical database for more than two years, and they could have been, I'm not sure, um, but I doubt it. Um, that tells me that they didn't have enough time to build something that would rival what the CDC does because the CDC is in the business of health, whereas the government and as a whole is, is not. Although they do have subsidiaries and pieces of the government, obviously, that are working on health constantly. So what this tells me is um, it's probably not a homegrown system, which is interesting. Now, first of all, if even if you get a caught solution, you are um, going to make it specific to your your space. You're going to build customizations on it. Um, again, having worked on databases and work like this, again, not in this aspect of, of the article, but in other kind of government things in my past, um, 
when they do COT solutions, there's very high security standards, which is a good thing. Um, they do usually require, um, you know, understanding every little aspect of, of the company. The other thing that, that really makes me pause and think what real time means. So anytime I see something that says real time in vendor work, I think that it means something gimmicky. Um, here, because this is a, a statement from a spokesperson that's not technology focused, I'm not sure what real time means. I know that the intent that they are meaning here is um, that we need to be able to do real time updates to be able to really understand when an outbreak is happening, when there's a hotbed, when there's you know very specific trends that have to be addressed very quickly. Um, and in the previous part of the article, remember they said that right now the CDC is about a week behind. It might be true, it might not be. Uh, but what it is saying is they wanna get next to real time. If they're going with a caught solution, there are only so many options for that. So I'm not going to go into what those are, um, but there are only a handful of solutions. And so it's interesting though, because if it is a caught solution, that means that the CDC would have had ample opportunity to have that as well. So maybe they also have the same system and maybe they've um, updated it. And that's where we get into this statement where it says new, faster, and complete. I can see where faster might might be accurate if it's a newer system, and they are saying it's a new system. But again, to the government, what is new? <laughs> Usually it's not what you and I think is new. Uh, and then complete data system. What that tells me, that's a very interesting choice of words. And this is a direct quote. So this makes me wonder if there was something missing, if they did go with a COT solution or even a homegrown system, if maybe the HHS created an add-on to the system the CDC already had, or they went with a newer COT solution. An operating division of HHS, that's where they're talking about that, will certainly participate in this, okay, here we go, streamlined all of government response. Streamlined all of government response. So this tells me that they have made a monolith and um, hopefully they used microservices. Something tells me they probably didn't. If they're doing real time analysis, they might have had to in certain aspects, but streamlined all of government. When I hear anything all of, I think of a core, a central hub called a data lake sometimes um, where everything is just thrown all into one place and then you query it as needed. Uh, it's usually something that's schema-less, although there are some that have schemas. And um, honestly, if, if I was building this, um, my brain functions this way though, I, I would definitely have some components, not all, I don't think you need it for all, um, some knowledge graph elements to this, not necessarily RDF. I know I'm jumping ahead in what we're going to talk about on this series, um, but I'm probably talking about a property graph. I think that would really give them a lot of, of oomph to what they're trying to do. I just wanted to go through this and talk about the database piece and the, the technology piece because it does sound like they might be introducing more problems than they're solving. Um, working quickly and trying to centralize everything does not seem like a surprising thing that the government would do because governments are trying to centralize power, centralize things. Um, and I'm not saying that that's good or bad as far as government and politics go, um, but as far as data goes, usually centralizing everything in one place makes, again, what we call a monolith, where it's very hard, it's very cumbersome. Uh, it might be quick and agile when you first create it, but after a time, it gets very clunky and very out of date and you start doing MacGyver moves where you kind of use bubblegum and duct tape to figure out what you need to do. And when it's something as serious as um, major diseases, that makes me a little nervous. So that uh, was my commentary on uh, the, the new uh, change in data practices on uh, COVID. 
and uh, what the U U.S. government is trying to do with that. Again, this was not a politica political commentary. It was a, a commentary on the technology because it was interesting that they did um, highlight certain things like real-time data. Um, oftentimes, you need a very high compute power um, to be able to do that. Again, there's only so many COT solutions for that. Um, and I know that even looking at that list in my head, there's at least two or three of them. You could probably cross off the list because um, the government usually doesn't do things in the cloud only because of security reasons. Um, there were other data considerations in this article that I would definitely recommend you go and check out and read about. Um, but I really wanted to mostly focus on the database side of this. Um, so with that, I hope you enjoy your weekend. I hope you um, found this uh, special edition informative. And um, so thank you for taking the time to listen to this. And uh, yeah, I hope you found it, found it interesting. <laughs>